Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Bed Surgery at Each. I welcome you to another anesthesiology lecture class. From today, we will be studying the sedatives. In the previous class, I have finished the anticholinergic. From today, we will start sedatives. In sedatives, we will be studying about phenothiazine, butyrophenones, alpha-2 agonist and the opioids. So today, we will be discussing the first class that is the first group which is phenothiazine group. Let us start our class. Before going to the class, this is my Facebook handle. You can uh, like this page and you will find different operation procedures in photographic mode I post different surgeries and this is my Instagram handle and here you will find different notes okay whatever notes I teach or whatever notes I have in my UG career I have already uh, uploaded in this channel in this page this is my Twitter handle okay and you can please subscribe to this channel there will be a subscribe button let us start our class phenothiazines okay some uh, I already told you we will be studying in five beds. First one is introduction. The pro drug, uh, the drug which is basically used is acepromazine. There is another one, tripropromazine, but it is very less commonly used. Okay, the most common one is the acepromazine, which is used as pre anesthetic. Okay, now it should be or it is generally used in healthy animals. Why it is not used in diseased patient or in a uh, patients which uh, comes falls under the category of third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, they are usually not avoided in uh, the risky patients. Okay, why we will discuss later. Next, it has fair muscle relaxation and poor analgesic. So it should be combined. When you are using anesthesia for anesthesia, then it should be uh, in a multi-drug uh, approach. Next, it can be used alone for non-painful diagnostic procedures or you can use acepromazin along with an ipoid for painful diagnostics and minor surgeries. Okay. It is a reliable uh, pre-anesthetic or reliable sedation for dogs, cats and horses but is not reliable in case of swine. So, in swine you use butyrophenones. We will discuss in next class the butyrophenones. Next, the mechanism of action. So, they bind into multiple receptors like they bind to dopamine receptors, adrenergic receptors, serotonin, acetylcholine and the histamine receptors. The important one is the dopamine receptors and the alpha 1 receptors. Okay. The plus plus sign this single plus means weakly, double plus moderate this is strongly. So they bind the dopamine receptors in chemoreceptor trigger zone CRTZ of medulla oblongata. When they bind to these CRTs, they produce anti-emetic effect. They are very good anti-emetics. If some conventional emetics, anti-emetics are not helpful or you are finding in some patients in which their vomiting is very high or their num number of vomitions are very high and you have used like common anti-emetics like ondan setter or medical permanent, they are not working, then you can try with phenothiazines. They are very good anti-emetics. Okay. Also, they bind the uh, dopamine receptors in medulla oblongata so they reduce the thermoregulatory control okay the thermoregulatory control will be lost because they block the dopamine receptors in medulla oblongata also due to this binding they increase the prolactin secretion you will find lactogenesis okay under the influence of uh, negative influence of prolactin lactogenesis is prevented when the dopamine receptors are blocked they will increase prolactin secretion and there will be lactogenesis in case of cattle in field you may find use of the triplophomazine which comes in brand name as sequil they are used for lactogenesis okay next this one is very important the adrenergic receptor this is why they are not used in diseased patient or having some problem systemic disease because they cause hypotension the hypotension is very very profound that is why they are not used in case of diseased patient only used in healthy patient rest of are not that much important you, you will remember the m3 i already told in the pre anesthetics or the anticholinergics next the systemic effects First one is the cardiovascular uh, effect. 
in cardiovascular effect uh, effect they reduce the stroke volume also the cardiac output and the hypotension mean arterial pressure okay and regarding heart rate they usually don't change heart rates but in some patients uh, some patients you may find slight increase in heart rate or you can say slight tachycardia slightly in some patients only otherwise there is no change in heart rate next the respiratory system you see these two systems are the core of anesthesiology the pulmonary system in the pulmonary system they usually reduce the respiration rate but the pco to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide partial pressure of oxygen uh, uh, oxygen and also the hemoglobin saturation these three parameters usually remain unchanged okay they does not affect these three parameters but there will be slight decrease in respiratory rate you can say pulmonary suppression there will be slight other effects other important systemic effects in case of gi system first one i already discussed that is anti emetic they are very good anti emetics they are central acting they will block the dopamine receptors in chemo receptor trigger zone okay and you know i already told in mechanism they bind to m3 muscarinic receptor which are present in gastrointestinal system so they will lose the tone of esophageal sphincter so they will cause gastro gastric reflux or you can say acid reflux also they will reduce the intestinal motility all these are m3 mediated but they are weak weak in nature intestinal motility okay so these are gi system effects now the urogenital system this is important in case of horse when the acepromazine is used in horse they cause penile protrusion penile protrusion this penile protrusion is basically dose dependent higher the dose higher the protrusion dose dependent and there is chance of development of penile protrusion or penile prolapse or preaprism preaprism due to this phenomenon they are avoided using in breeding stallions in case of breeding stallions they are not used for they are not used but you can use for gelding castration gelding but remember this one in breeding stallion acepromazine drug is not used because of this penile protrusion properties hematology they reduced the hematocrit value okay these three are the other systemic effects okay you should know about or you should be aware about next we will go for the pharmacokinetics okay the drug is acepromazine because uh, triprofamazine is not much of used as pre anesthetics onset of action is 15 minute peak effect within 30 minute the duration of sedation is 2 to 3 hours and the dosage is in case of cats and small dogs 0.05 to 0.2 mg per kg body weight in case of large dogs 0.04 to 0.06 mg per kg body weight and the horses 0.02 to 0.04 mg per per kg body weight remember when you will be using 0.04 mg per kg body weight in case of horses that is an article about 60% of penile length will be protruded out okay so usually they are used in lesser margins so that there will be less pronal protrusion and also there is an article when they are used at 0.4 mg per kg body 90% penis was protruded 90% protrusion okay so basically there will be dose dependent protrusion so in if you are using in horses use in lesser doses or you can use with an opioid okay so this all is all about the phenothiazines next we will go for the butopenans okay if you like this video please subscribe and uh, share to your friends or juniors or colleagues okay see you in next class bye bye